Thank you, everybody. Before I actually get started, I do want to lay out a small disclaimer. Uh, one of the images that I will be showing in my speech uh, does contain an artistic rendering of male nudity as well as uh, some physical aggression is kind of implied. Okay, to start off, I want to show you guys a quick couple images. And I want you to take a look at these images and just think to yourself as to whether or not you would consider them vandalism or art. We all can see graffiti everywhere. You can see it on the sides of buses, buildings, trains, in inner cities, as well as in even rural areas like this. But what would you say if I told you an artist in the 1980s was able to change the way we look at it, as well as be able to become famous for the vandalism that he put out into the world? Today, I'm going to be talking to you about just that person. And that was public artist Keith Haring. Through art, we can learn a lot about the world. We can learn about the social issues that we face every day, as well as the way others see things that we don't necessarily see. Keith Haring's work was definitely a good example of this. As highlighted in the New York Times article decoding Keith Haring's early work, published in November of 2015 and accessed by myself on March 12th of this year, a well-known director and curator of museums, Jeffrey Deitch, is quoted. He talks about how pieces like Bombs and Dogs is shown here, address something central in our society and the time in which they were created. And in this case, Keith Haring was pulling attention to the Cold War. I've been a fan of his work for most of my life and was introduced to it when I was just in kindergarten. Throughout my college career this far and actually most of my life, I've done a lot of research on Keith Haring. And unfortunately, I can't tell you about everything that I know within the time that I have. But today, I would like to tell you a little more about his life, about some of his artistic style, as well as some of the social issues that he addressed through his artwork. And now that you know who and what I'm going to be talking about, I would like to fill you in a little bit more about his life so you can get a better picture of him. Keith Haring was born in 1958 in Coatstown, Pennsylvania. And he lived there for all of his childhood with his family. He grew up drawing constantly and was inspired heavily by people like Dr. Seuss, Walt Disney, as well as his father, who was an independent animator. After he graduated from high school, he made a move to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania to attend the Ivy School of Professional Arts. Lucky for us, that was a very short-lived study, and he was only there for two semesters. Then he made a huge move to New York City to attend the School of Visual Arts, otherwise known as SVA. While he was living there in New York, unfortunately, he got into a little bit of trouble um, and was fined several times in between 1980 and 1985 for vandalism, as well as he was arrested once in 1982 for criminal mischief. All of this was because he was doing the subway drawings that you saw earlier. Over the time he lived in New York, he was definitely able to create a name for himself and he also became an advocate for social change. In the book, Keith Haring, The Political Line, which was published in 2014, a well, uh, director of museums and fine arts museums in San Francisco, Colin B. Bailey, talks about Keith Haring's work. He says that Keith Haring's bold style and prodigious output brought him global recognition, and that his work in a variety of media was able to unapologetically denounce issues such as racism, capitalism, homophobia, dictatorship, and atomic war, as well as many other things. Unfortunately, Keith Haring's work stopped in uh, February of 1990 because he passed away from AIDS-related medical complications. But he continues to live on through the changes that he made in both art and world culture. Now that you know who Keith Haring is, I want to talk to you a little more about his artistic style. His style started out pretty traditional due to his training at the School of Visual Arts, but it quickly took a turn towards a more graffiti-like approach. He was able to use bold colors, defined shapes, thick lines, and a quick pace to create his messages. As you can see here on the left, he did barking dogs, and here on the right is Radiant Baby. These are images that even a member of a non-art community can recognize because they're so iconic. 
Also, Keith Haring kept journals very regularly of his work. And actually, they got published in 2010 by the Penguin Group. And he wrote in there that my paintings are a record of a given space of time. To paint a consistent composition, you can't do it in a period of more than one session. In other words, every one of his pieces he was able to do in one sitting. And to me, that is truly amazing. And now that you can understand who Keith Haring is and what style he worked with, I want to talk to you about some of the major issues that he addressed with his work. Within the 1970s and 80s, there was a huge epidemic hitting the country's major cities, and that was crack cocaine. Keith Haring was able to use his talent and his notoriety to work on major campaigns like the Crack is Whack campaign. This was a mural that he did in a park in Brooklyn. Also, uh, he was heavily affected by, like I said earlier, the issues of racism. Not only that, but the issue of police brutality. The piece that speaks to me the most that he did on this subject was that on, of the issue of the death of Michael Stewart. Michael Stewart was a young, aspiring African-American artist who started out much like Keith Haring. He was arrested one day for spray painting on the side of a building. And um, unlike Keith, by the time he and the arresting officers got back to the police station, he had suffered so much physical injury that he slipped into a coma and soon after died. Hence why the piece is so powerful. The last issue I want to talk about is within the 1980s, there was a huge issue hitting particularly New York City and the gay community pretty hard. And that was the AIDS epidemic. Keith Haring, being a member of the gay community himself, was highly affected by this. He lost a lot of friends and lovers, but it caused him to work on major projects as well to bring awareness and to educate as well as promote safe sex. And these are some of the pieces that he's done. And he's done a large variety of work on this topic. Throughout this presentation, I've talked to you about Keith Haring. I told you about his work. He was born in 1958 in Kutztown, Pennsylvania, attended the School of Visual Arts, got in a little trouble, and built a name for himself to create social change. As I had stated earlier, a well-known art director and curator, Jeffrey Deitch, talked about how Keith Haring addressed central issues to our society within the time he created his pieces. And I hope you can see that in the work that I've shown you. And I want to leave you with one last quote from Keith Haring's journals. Keith Haring stated that this is my message, and the medium is unimportant. It is art as we know it, and it is life as we know it. The medium is the tool for the message, but it is not the message. The message is the message. Art is life, and life is art. And the importance of both is over-exaggerated as well as greatly misunderstood. Thank you.